Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I've had some questions from users about making Tinkercad seem a little faster. I've got some ideas, so let's get cracking. All right, friends. So this was a project sent to me by a user, and it wouldn't load for him because it had become complex. Now, when I mean complex, I had to ungroup this probably 40 times to get it all torn apart. And what I'm going to show you here is piece one and piece two were grouped. So I'm going to do control G to group those. And then as piece three was created, it was grouped again. So there were groups in groups. You can see how this just turned red and it took that long. Then it was duplicated again. And sometimes they were in the exact same location and grouped with the next piece as the group started to contain many, many groups. Now, when I talked to the user, the user did not understand that you could just do control D and have all the parts sitting separate. And also, since you couldn't see, like I've nudged these a little bit so they're separate, the user couldn't see that there was a second piece here. So I just kept deleting and there were more and more and more. And then also, this is a cool complex part Many of these have been brought in, scaled, and then grouped together till it was unusable. So I'm going to ungroup everything I just did by doing undo and undo and undo and undo and undo and undo and undo. And mine did not get to the point where it was so slow it couldn't work with. But that's what the user had experienced. And it was because of how things were grouped, duplicated, and added to each other without any real need. So the way I like to work with grouping is when I am all done. So say I wanted my gems and bones to be grouped. I am going to, and I'll do control Z because I didn't mean to grab that. I'm trying to just grab these parts and I'm going to hide them. This skull I know is very complex, so I'm going to hide it. And then now that I've got all my bones created and placed, and I'm pretty sure there aren't any duplicates of duplicates, Oh, check that out. There's still one more duplicate of a duplicate. And this was where it was being sliced, actually. But let's see inside there. Nope, that is one piece and one piece. All right, so everything's in one group now. I'm going to grab that entire chunk and create one section of it. It still takes a long time because that's a lot of complex custom parts being grouped. But this is the smartest way I know of to group multiple shapes. And what we're doing down here is slicing them so that they cut off flat too. And when it's red, you just need to wait. You're making Tinkercad work, so just be patient. Usually I speed up the video right here, but I'm going to actually leave that so you can see just how long it took. At this point, I'm going to do show all and bring back my other pieces. Notice there is nothing hanging underneath. Or is there? I'm going to nudge these up. If you haven't seen this, I like to use control up arrow and it's going to go up one millimeter. It had everything, so I'm going to do control Z and I'm just going to select those pieces and do control up. And that's nice and smooth like I would expect. So just a reminder, make sure you're only creating the parts you need. And I would only group when I'm done. And if I don't have to group it, like if this is what I wanted to 3D print, I would leave it as separate parts and export the entire thing to the 3D printer. The second thing I'd like to share with you is when you create something complex, you can save it as a part. So I'm going to do control D on this little piece right here. And I'm going to drop it to the work plane. And notice it is called tread and I cannot change it. Well, let me show you how I made it. So it is just a sphere that I held down and I shrunk until it was size one or two. When I pressed enter, I used fit view to zoom in and then I'm gonna stretch it so it's long and skinny. I'm gonna make it half as thick this way and half as thick this way. If we look at it from a corner, you can see that if we do control D and rotate two of those, it makes that nifty little tread. I'm going to take those two and I'm going to rotate them 22 and a half degrees to get the angle that I wanted. I'm going to grab this shape right now and I'm going to just make it a little larger. I'm going to make it two by typing the two right here. 
and I want several of these to go across this stair. So what I did was I took that pair. Notice I have not grouped anything yet. And I did Control D. I only used the arrow keys. And now without touching anything else, if I do Control D, I can move them across. I'm going to select this chunk and do Control D again. I'm going to nudge them up. And I'm going to nudge them a couple to the right so that they're centered pretty nifty. Notice going back to the last part of this project, I'm still not grouping anything. I am gonna get this at an angle where I can only select these, and I've got them. I'm gonna do Control D and nudge them forward, and then I'm gonna take all of this. Oops, I missed one. So I'm gonna do Control Z and delete all those. Let's grab this one more time and be a little more careful. Control D, arrow keys, nudge it up. I like that spacing. And now I'm gonna grab all of this project. Still haven't made it into a group because it's harder on the system. I'm gonna turn them all to a gray I wanna work with for my project over here. And then I'm gonna take these shapes and I'm gonna move down to my shapes collection. It has an awesome spot here where you can click create shape. I'm going to call this one Tread 2. Stairs is what it's going to be tagged for. Helps if I spell it correctly. I don't think I need a name. I'm going to leave the multicolor and I don't want to lock the part size. I want to be able to adjust this and I'm going to save that shape. So now if I go over here to my project and do Control D on the stairs, switch my grid back to 1. If I move it out, and I do control up a couple. Now I can bring out a tread and set it on top of here, just like this. And treads take a moment to load initially, but then the system works with them a lot smoother afterwards. You can see that I switched colors between the two days that I did this. All I'd have to do is switch to the multiple color and pick the other one. And also I changed the design a little bit, but the idea is the same. Creating your own shapes that you can reuse is a fantastic way to save resources when you're working on cool projects in Tinkercad. Alrighty friends, so hopefully those tricks will make you more efficient as you group things and you start to use parts which also are simpler for the Tinkercad system to work with. Friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button and last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.